He was a coaching icon, Mooch. He was a football icon. He was a sports icon. He's kind of larger than life, wasn't he? Yeah, Andrew, he, he was. It's a sad day uh, learning of Don's passing. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm closer to the age of his sons. I knew David and Mike. Uh, I didn't know his daughters. But uh, Coach Shula was always good to me. He was always very friendly to me. Uh, and he and Marianne and, and uh, my wife and I spent a Super Bowl up in his suite uh, one, one Super Bowl, and, and we just talked and talked and talked. And, and I, he had so much respect <clears throat> from so many people. His players loved him, obviously. You know, I, I remember, uh, Andrew, I remember a story when I was a uh, coach. I was never a head coach against Don Shula, but I was an assistant coach with the Green Bay Packers, and we played the Dolphins. Um, I think only head coaches get to shake head coaches' hands before the game. I didn't meet him then. <laughs> But um, I remember my dad, my dad was visiting us in San Francisco, came to the Saturday night meeting and had the Saturday night, we call it a snack, uh, with the team before <laughs> we take bed check. And Bill Walsh was, Bill Walsh was uh, with us and we were sitting there having, and all of a sudden my dad asked Bill Walsh, uh, he said, coach, who's the greatest coach of all time? <laughs> he asked him that, right? like right out of the clear blue sky he asked Bill Walsh who's the best coach of all time and Bill said two guys he said Vince Lombardi and he said Don Shula and and you know my dad asked him to explain why he felt that way and and uh, when he started talking about Don Shula um, I know Bill had so much respect for him uh, because you're talking about a long time of being a successful guy. It's, it's hard to be successful as a head coach in the National Football League for one or two years, let alone for how many years that he had done it. And to win 347 games is unbelievable. Talk about consistency. Talk about a culture that he, that he you know, formulated with his teams. He, we all remember his Miami Dolphin days, but he was a heck of a coach for the Baltimore Colts too. And he played in the league some. Um, but he was a gentleman. He was a tough guy. His teams were built that way. It wasn't, uh, you know, he threw the ball with Don Marino, but before that, man, they were a run team. They were a physical, tough team, and that's, uh, that's how he, he, he wanted to, to be known as. Uh, when you play the Dolphins, you're going to be in for it. Now, we all know he had the only undefeated season. Um, that's, that's almost impossible to do now. But uh, he, went, he went to the playoffs five years in a row in that era starting with the Dolphins when he became the coach there. So he, he told me, I said, what's the secret? He said, he said Mooch, you got to get started fast. <laughs> and I guess he got started fast, both in Baltimore and, and Miami. And, and um, he just felt that starting fast for a young coach was uh, important to gain some credibility early. And so uh, he did that, and he, and he maintained that credibility throughout his career. He's, uh, he's going to be missed. We, uh, uh, our condolences uh, to his family and uh, to David and Michael and, and, and the sisters as well and Marianne. So it's a sad day in the National Football League. Mooch, what's it like? I wonder, as a head coach, it's one thing to have Bill Walsh there with you. What's it like? Take me back to that day when you were in the suite with Don Shula as someone who <laughs> coaches football to be sitting here picking the brain of a great like Don Shula. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, you know, he, was, he, he, he wasn't he was a guy that could only talk football. He was a smart man, and he was uh, well-versed, you know, the Shula restaurants and, you, you know, about, you, you name it, he could talk about it. And, uh, but, it but just sitting there next to him watching a, a game, um, yeah, every now and then he would, he would comment on things or maybe say, hey, I thought maybe they would do this. Or, you know, he, you could tell he had a great football mind. But he was always one of those guys that asked about you and your family. And he cared, he cared as much about uh, you when he was talking to you as he, he did anything else. And that's, that's really a great quality to have. Because uh, yeah, I'm, sh I'm assuming he did that with everybody. Because every time I saw him, whether he was in his wheelchair, you know, later on in, in, his, in his life, um, or before that, he would always ask, 
how's the family? How's your wife? How's your kids? Because he was, his family was very important to him too. And, and so that's where I gained so much respect for him as a human being. But uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah, the great Don Shula, who was so proud of his sons, obviously, who were coaching, so proud of all his kids and his grandkids, and who always said, just remember me and that our teams did things the right way. We won, we did it fairly, and that we won the right way. And certainly that 72 team, a source of huge, immense pride for him, for the players he coached on that team, and really for all of South Florida and the National Football League as well. Mooch, thanks for sharing your memories with okay. us today about the great thanks, Don Shula. Andrew. Good to see you, sir. Hopefully next time under better circumstances, we're mourning the loss of Don Shula. Dead at the age of 90 today with flags outside the Dolphins facility at half staff in memory of the legendary coach Shula. This is in Davie, Florida. Don Shula, 90 years old.